Hello everyone, today's video will be the start of a new series that I hope you guys enjoy in, the si in a similar vein to the Karo Khan vs Everything series that I do in Rapid Chess on this same account. I decided it might be more interesting or potentially more fun to do it in Bullet, in probably 1 plus 1 Bullet, um, and just play the Karo Khan against everything, and therefore the speedrun will be a lot quicker and a lot speedier because the games will take way shorter amounts of time. I could potentially do like two or three uh, games per episode, so let me know what you guys think about that. But it'd be a nice change to have some bullet chess going on as well, so I think it should be interesting. I hope you guys enjoy I'll do some short analysis at the end of each game, but it will be brief. With that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so I've made the crucial mistake of not warming up whatsoever. So, um... We're just going to see how this goes. Uh, I'm not going to think too hard. I'm not going to be able to say a whole lot, but we've got a nice little setup here. My opponent's playing very passive. Um, I kind of want to get the F-pawn going. I love this structure. Whoa, okay. Let's take. Let's put the rook on the E-file. We've got to control this square. That's going to be really important. Let's ruin the pawn structure. Also take a defender off of the E-5 square. The queen is now developed with tempo. That is very very interesting um i need to get my bishop out i want to put the bishop here just controlling some good squares i can always whack a knight wow okay i don't know what that does but cool um i want to put the knight on g4 so it can access e5 in conjunction with my other knight because when if my opponent takes after i put a knight there i want to be able to put another knight on that square. Okay, I'll drop the bishop back happily. Uh, the bishop is very, well, very, very well situated here. Holding down the fort, defending e5. This is a really nice position. My opponent retreats his knight, meaning his bishop can't get out because e5 is such a problem. Which means that... Okay... I am going to do this, even though I'm going to have to give up both my knights because it's going to be my dark squared bishop versus his light squared bishop. And his light squared bishop is woeful. I don't want to trade queen. Oh my god. Oh, well, not going to lie. I kind of forgot my bishop was defending h2. I got very lucky. <laughs> oh, my days. Okay. Um, I think I should lift the rook. I think I should lift the rook. The thing is, my opponent just can't do anything because of how bad this bishop is. Um, that should be a free pawn. Let's take it. And we're just going to go straight back. Uh, I don't think I'm blundering anything stupid there. Yeah, okay. Go back. H2 is now defended. Something like rook f7, attacking f2. I mean, it exists, but it's not scary. Um, yeah, let's do that. H2 is fine. I'm going to take with the queen. I'm actually going to offer him a queen trade because up two pawns, even though it's opposite colored bishops, I have... G and H connected passes, and my opponent is also very low on time in comparison to me. So I should be able to convert this relatively easily. Yeah, let's not even bother taking. I don't even want it. Let's just keep this pawn horrible, uh, making it impossible for him to do a whole lot. Let's go H4, just lock the bishop in. G4 potentially to follow. Um, let's do it. If rooks... Okay, that's a decent move. Let's get the king up. Yes, please. He just wasted a bunch of time. Uh, let's drop the bishop back. I want to put the bishop on e5. Yeah, and then I can play f4, and I can continue advancing. I should probably bring my rook to the c file. That's the only open file, and I want to control it. I'll take a trade, yeah. This should be a winning endgame regardless. Um. Yeah, okay, my opponent times out. I think... That was always going to be completely winning um, in that case. And it looks like it could be a really high accuracy game. So let's get into the analysis. It'll be a brief one. And then we'll play one more game. Okay, so a very clean game. I also didn't realize my rating would go up that quickly. So this could be a pretty short series if things go well. Um, yeah, obviously we went for a Karo setup. My opponent did some very weird Karo thing. Uh, just developed normally. Um, obviously, I don't know what the correct moves are, but it doesn't really matter. We just get a nice little center. Castling's a mistake, but whatever. Uh, D5, I think E5 is the obvious choice here. I suppose you could defend and have him take, but personally, I like this structure. I take on F6 because I want to control the E5 square. 
and make it difficult for my opponent to do anything. Taking on g6 obviously ruins the structure, which comes in handy later. The king on f7 is always going to be weak, so as long as we can keep our composure, trade some pieces. We have the opposite colored bishops in this position, but it's just completely winning because my opponent is equal material, but his pawn structure is horrific. Mine is absolutely perfect, which by the way is one of the one of the reasons that the Karo, in my opinion, is so good. I know this isn't a pure Karo or anything, but it's close enough. Uh, just put pressure on pawns, get my rook involved. My opponent blunders a pawn, which makes it easy. And from there, I mean, you know, it's just another tactic to win another pawn. Get the queen trade. Maybe we could have taken here, but I didn't see a need to allow this pawn to be an asset. Um, I'd rather it just remain a massive weakness. And then we just start advancing the kingside pawns. Uh, I probably should have taken the C file a little bit earlier than I did, but we end up doing it. And once the bishop trade happens, I mean, black just can't do anything in this position. It's just completely game over. This bishop's basically locked out of the game, and it's two pawns versus nothing. There's not really anything you can do about that as the black pieces, even though it's opposite colored bishops, because at the end of the day, I can always march the pawns a little bit further down and then use my king to go sweep up all the rest of the pawns. So the, there is nothing you can do as the black pieces here. Some opposite colored bishop endgames are drawn. Some opposite colored bishop endgames with where white, where the one of the sizes two pawns up, sometimes those are drawn. Not this one. Anyway, let's get into the next game. Okay, that was really quick. Again, we're going to go for the reverse Karo. Technically, it's the Saragossa. Um, which is just a strange name. I don't really know what that is. I'm going to do everything I can to not play the London. So I'm very happy my opponent allowed Bishop to G5. Um, yeah, let's just go for this. I mean, it's technically a classic London-esque position, except my Bishop isn't on F4. So therefore, I think I am free of guilt. And this is kind of like a collie, where E4 is often the main idea. Um, C5 is a good move. That's kind of difficult for me to... I'm going to go A4 just to threaten A5. If I can induce a5, then maybe b5 can be a nice outpost, and maybe b6 will be a bit weak. Uh, yeah, let's push. I don't think that can ever be a particularly bad thing to lose a pawn like this. Okay, let's drop back. I'm, I was tempted to go here and put a queen here, but that I don't think that attack would ever lead to anything. Now that c4 has been played, um, e4 is the idea, absolutely. I don't know if I'm missing a tactic here. But I think now I'm just going to play e5. Like I said in the last game, I really like this structure of pawns. It's kind of just like a pet. I, well, I would say a pet line, but it's not a line. It's just like, I don't know, a, a formation that I really enjoy. Here I'm going h4 to stop knight to g5. And we are, we're getting a very similar position where the e-pawn is going to be incredibly weak. Uh, we're just going to put a whole lot of pressure on it. I don't know how we're going to mount it up any further, but um, we might have to maneuver this knight. Very similar to the last game, honestly. Very similar, except I don't know where to put the knight. I'm just going to go h5, supported by the knight, to cut off the g6 square to try and stop this knight getting into the game. I suppose, again, the dark square bishop for my opponent is just really, really... Sorry, the light square bishop is really bad, and mine is actually quite strong. Um, I can't really set up a battery with the queen and the bishop on this diagonal because it's too well defended. But we're definitely in the driver's seat. It's now just, can we actually make something of it? And I'm not sure how to go about doing that. So I'm going to double rooks on the e-file. Uh, I need to figure out a better plan for this knight. Maybe I should try and get it into f4 or something. But for now, we can make some improving moves. Okay. Let them... No, that's fine. That's fine. I'm expecting this. I don't know what the point of that is, but we're going to bring our knight in. And now we have some decent pressure. We have potential tactics as well. Okay, let's shift over. This is now a move. There we go. He takes, he loses his rook. So that is a pawn. And my opponent times out. Okay, so we managed to find a decent tact. Is my... 
Oh, don't tell me my camera is frozen. Okay, I have absolutely no idea if my camera is frozen or not. I literally can't figure it out. But we're going to get into some analysis quickly. So hopefully, even if my camera is bugging out a bit, it won't be too big of a deal. Okay, okay, I'm going to make this short and sweet. So we don't have the game review here, but basically the whole game is about controlling the E5 square. We we place the pieces in a way to support a potential E4. But what my opponent did was go C5, which is a really good move because... If I try and play e4, that's a mistake now because the issue is, let's say a lot of things get traded, then my opponent can kind of just, well, there's this, I suppose. But what I am what I didn't want to allow was like a complete liquidation of the position. I know this could be done a bit better from both sides, but if all the pawns in the center fall, I have no advantage. Therefore, I have to delay the move e4. So I just try and put a bit of pressure on the queen side. c4 I really liked because it meant that I could now go for this e4 move. And, well, if my opponent were to take, then okay. I'm just going to try and claim e5 anyway. But what happened here was that I got this same, like, weak e6 pawn. And as long as I can control the square in front of it, then I can put a lot of pressure on. I wasn't completely sure of the plans that I should be adopting in this position, but I thought that just adding more and more pressure to e5 was always going to be a good thing. And then the final piece to improve was this knight, which I wanted to put on f4, which I then was able to do. My opponent messes up a bit by allowing this knight d5 tactic, but let's say my opponent just goes like back to e7. Knight g6 is apparently a good move. And after this, uh, the same tactic works with rook takes anyway. So, very interesting game. I'm apolo apologies about the camera. I don't know what's happened there, but uh, at least it was good for the first half of the video, or I hope. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I will drop another episode of this soon. The shorter video formats make it a lot easier for me to fit in with my schedule. So, yeah, have a good one, guys.